Chrono Forge is a hype play and earn MMORPG that is set to drop their token later this month and has their first play and earn season coming up with a massive 6 million Rift crypto prize pool. This is an in depth dive into the Rift token. So today we're going to be covering critical details about the Chrono Forge NFTs, explain when and how they earn the Rift token, and which is going to get the airdrop. I'll also cover how you can earn Rift without buying any NFTs and qualify for their free mint. And stay till the end. I'll cover my personal strategy and what I'm planning to do in preparation for everything. GMGM GM to all the new faces and returning strategists. But before we dive into the airdrop details, a quick disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You can lose money with crypto and NFTs. The crypto world moves fast. Always check the latest updates before making any decisions. Now, let's cover the critical details of these different NFTs. So what is Chrono Forge? It is an action MMORPG that's a fantasy base with different animal races, as you can see on the screen. When you look at Chrono Forge, it has a massive following of over 400,000 followers on X Twitter currently, and it has some of the biggest backers as well. When we compare this to it's one it's going to be its main competitor, which is going to be big time or one of its main competitors. We see that big time currently has a following of 290. 3,000. That just shows that there's hype on social media, but we'll see if that actually translates. Now let's do a deep dive into Rift and the utility and how it functions inside the Chrono Forge ecosystem. It's going to be the main cryptocurrency and main token for Chrono Forge, where it serves three primary functions. The first primary function is where you can convert server-based items, so items that you get in-game through achievements into NFTs to make them tradable between players. In order to control the rate of production of these NFTs and maintain a balanced game, players will be required to spend a variable amount of Rift to mint the NFTs based on the server items. Once an item has been minted out and created into NFTs, that it starts to become more rare and it becomes harder to find, but also use a higher amount of Rift, it adjusting based on the circulation and the how valuable it is in game. Also, Rift is required for fusing NFTs. Basically, you're going to be burning multiple NFTs to level up your current NFT, which makes that supply of the different NFTs deflationary. I've seen this in different games and projects. The actual demand of these different NFTs will depend on how useful or how valuable the players see it in game. Any Rift used for the above purposes will be locked into ecosystem fund wallet for at least five years rather than be recirculated into the economy. Locking it up for five years is significant and making it not be recirculated into the economy is another key way to keep the token from losing value from token inflation. So the second main utility is going to be gameplay governance and incentives. This sounds like just regular voting for governance for the game, but it's actually in-game politics. The cities are managed by players, and these are trading cities that float around the world. And based on this, these are trading companies. You join a trading company and you have voting rights. World PvP different areas and regions where you can compete and do different things like activate a Chrono Forge, attack other trading companies. There's politics to this, and what they want is they want to incentivize players to make sure that they're participating inside these player governed trading companies which is essential to the core gameplay of chrono forge even as a game coming into a saturated market as an mmorpg you want to implement new mechanics rather than just have it based on just in an economy and just on earning if this is interesting and fun and adds a whole new dynamic to the game this could be one of those things that pulls other players into playing this game because it's unique and different and part of this is to incentivize players to vote regularly. An amount of Rift will be distributed to players that hold powerful assets. This is going to be airships and prospecting deeds. These are the these are other NFTs that you can own for the game. And I'll be talking about them soon. And this is what allows you to generate Rift semi-passively every month. But you have to be voting and being active in the game with this portion at least. Players will also get Rift based on completing outstanding gameplay achievements, for example, defeating the most bosses in any given month. The last and third utility is incentivizing third-party ecosystem contributions. Here is the Rift token distribution. The token mission is a fixed supply of 1 billion tokens that will occur over three years 
and their unlock is interesting it's going to correspond to active player volume rather than a traditional linear release which is better because if there are more players or if there are less players the tokens get to be adjusted which is necessary for controlling token inflation as well here are the major token areas that they're distributing to so events are five percent adventure airdrop is at five percent prospecting deeds is 15 airship is 15 core contributors are 20 strategic kol kol is key opinion leaders this is just their partners and strategic uh, early investors 24.5 percent ecosystem is 15.5 percent so one of the most important things about the tokenomics is the initial airdrop of 5%, which right before game launch, 5% of Rift is going to be immediately unlocked and distributed to all the people who own their adventure NFTs in an equal amount. I'll cover it more in details, but basically it's unlocked, meaning there is no cliff period investing time that you have to hold it. You only get a certain percentage. You get 100% of your tokens at airdrop and you can sell them you can do whatever you want with them at that moment and this is why the adventure nfts have nearly doubled in value and this is potentially where some of the opportunity could lie depending on where the price of rift ultimately ends up and jumping into the two other nfts briefly is prospect deeds which is essentially the land inside the game and airships which is a utility nft that helps with dungeon raids future jeff here just want to make a quick clarification to talk about the differences between prospecting deeds and airships from a supplies perspective. Even though they have equal amounts, 15% for prospecting deeds, 15% of the supply goes to airships. The biggest difference is you're going to be getting more of the monthly supply with prospecting deeds because there is a lower amount. It is five times less than the amount of airships. Airships, the total amount is 2,500, 2,500. And the prospecting deeds, there are only 500 deeds. So over the monthly period, when you get everything unlocked, you get more. Plus, deed owners, you're going to get, you're entitled to a percentage of all the resources harvested by other players within your plot of land. And you get more bonuses for the more deeds that you own in that area as well. Now let's jump into the price of deeds. They are expensive right now. 2.986 ETH to 3 ETH is the floor with only a few listed currently. So the floor for this is at 0.4925 ETH. And if you're trying to get into these different airships and buy them, be, pay attention to the different traits, depending on which one you want to specialize. If you want to go into crafting, if you want to do more dungeons, if you're go you want the apothecary for the revives. So there's going to be complex complexity into these different nft assets and i like complexity inside an in ecosystem and economy because it presents a lot of different opportunities for you to earn and to play the game and again this is to incentivize the court game loop which is needed by voting inside these trading companies inside game this is where they mention to reward powerful players who contribute weekly to trading votes 30 percent of the supply will be distributed over three years this is just again for to support air, airships and the prospecting deeds and to make sure that weekly you're going to have to participate in company votes the thing and the caveat with this is it also has a subject of 90 day lock so you have a month of voting and then you have rift that you can complain yet you can claim and then on top of that you have to wait 90 days so three months to unlock that so depending on where the crypto market is it could be good it could be bad but at least it's a slow emissions into the ecosystem and that it controls token inflation. Unfortunately, for the people who want to make more money fast, it sucks, but it's better for the ecosystem in the long run. So this is a risk because this is three years. We are near the start of a bull market or even in, in the start of a bull market, depending on who you talk to. How long bull markets last, we don't know. It could be one year, two years depending you could be accumulating rift into the end of a bull into a bear market but that is a risk if you're considering getting into this the next thing is adventure stake and multipliers so another thing that you can do with these two nfts with the airships and the staking deeds is you can stake multiple adventures onto them to multiply how much more rift that you get depending on how much you you stake will increase your rift by different bonus amounts and different tiers. So deed holders 
are the ones who have to stake at least one adventurer to be eligible for company governance awards on top of needing to vote as well. And you can, for the bonus of deeds is that you can stake up to five adventurers and you have a linear increase of the rift rewards from that month's allocation all the way up to 115, 50%. Now with support airships, you don't have to stake adventures. You can just have it and just passively vote on in the game and participate that way and still get your rift rewards. But you have a less amount of adventures that you can stake and to increase the rift rewards to that month's allocation to 90%. A key component with adventure staking with prospecting deeds and airships is you can see here after game launch, if you do staking right now, you can stake your adventures, you'll earn rare mount NFTs. But what was mentioned in Discord is if you're looking to maximize your Rift rewards, you might want to hold on to your adventure NFTs for when they release the Rift rewards announcement. Because if you stake it now or right before it, it's going to take 90 days to be able to get your rare mount NFTs. And then you're going to have to wait. And you also can upgrade your land and your airships through staking adventures, but it doesn't increase the amount of rift allocated to the community. It's going to be a set allocation depending on the player activity and whatever else they set on the back end. But what happens instead is that you can earn more of that. What your multipliers will, will determine on how much rift that you get is based on these three different items. How upgraded each holder deeds and airships are, like we mentioned, how much rift are distributed in month with alignment of player activity and consumption and the proportion of holders failing to participate in trading votes governance or failing to stake prospecting adventures or deeds in that month. So if those holders do not participate in votes, they don't get their rift or if they don't even stake adventures onto their deeds, they don't, they don't qualify for rift as well. And then that gets redistributed to all of the people inside that are eligible for that prize pool. So that's something to, to note as well. Now let's talk about how many tokens are actually gonna be available in the circulating supply at TGE, token gathering event, when it's available to the public. For the first four months, it'll be 9.3 total. 5% is from the adventure airdrop. 4.3% is from KOL presale, so strategic partners, key opinion leaders. Total circulating supply is going to be at 93 million tokens until airship and deed rifts can be claimed, which is one month for voting, and then three months for the unlock period, so four months total in the very beginning. And how much you might be thinking per adventure is going to be 6,667 rift per adventure NFT. And because of this, this is one of those areas and opportunities that I'm looking at closely. Now this brings us to the current prices of adventure NFTs right now. The current floor on Blur is 7.5. E. So you have to be monitoring this just in case this is the bottom and you want to get in before the prices start to increase if they increase. So the floor for this is at 0.4925 ETH. And if you're trying to get into these different airships and buy them, be, pay attention to the different traits depending on which one you want to specialize. If you want to go into crafting, if you want to do more dungeons, if you're go you want the apothecary for the revives. So there's going to be complex complexity into these different nft assets and i like complexity inside an in ecosystem and economy because it presents a lot of different opportunities for you to earn and to play the game and one of the major price catalysts that i can see inside chronoforge currently is when you look at their strategic partners and angels when you look at this these are some of the biggest content creators in the crypto gaming space and the crypto space in general you see people like zeneca dingling Elio Trades, Alex Becker, FaZe Banks, Crypto Lark, Ivan on Tech. So you know that when the game and the token goes live, that these content creators will be talking about this. So at that point, you'll see more growth or we're expecting more growth. We have to see how it actually plays out. That's one thing that I'm monitoring and seeing that there could be a massive marketing push based on who they got in early. So one of the risks is that I see with Chronoforge currently is that their monthly website visits is only at 30,000 for the last 28 days. When you compare that to a lot of the top crypto gaming projects currently, there is a massive difference. But this could be because there hasn't been a big marketing push for this game yet, that there is opportunity, but we don't know. We have to see if there's players are going to start adopting and playing this game once it's released. If this number doesn't go up, this is a risk that I see. As for my personal strategy, what I'm planning to do is get at least one adventure NFT. I don't own any of the 
any of the in-game assets right now and planning to sell into the airdrop hype depending on what my numbers tell me with the value of the airdrop potentially if the value of the airdrop can potentially just pay for the adventure nft itself i will keep it but if not i'm just going to sell into the hype i might get an airship but the unlock period is massive in over three years that spans a long time and could be out of this this cycle that we're in currently and you'd be holding tokens so in full transparency as i was editing this video i've been monitoring blur and looking for when people were listing their different nfts i was able to snipe some of the rarer nfts from a more rare class on the adventure side to a more in-demand hauler on the airship side will these prices hold I don't know, but the reason why I would jumped on this opportunity is because the next prices for these different NFTs were about 0.1 ETH or more. So then because I saw that, I jumped on them and I got into the ecosystem. When I initially recorded this video, I did not own any of the NFTs. And as I was editing, doing literally the final cut, I saw those opportunities and picked those up currently. So that's an update on my side right now. Also, you don't have to buy any of the NFTs to play. You can play as a free to play player. You just have to mint this Rift Season Pass Mint, which is going to be a free mint. You just have to follow these steps. And if you want to follow these steps and get step by step instruction, watch this video 